So welcome everyone uh, on board of flight OER17. This is your captain speaking. Uh, we have a very important guest on our flight, flight today. This is Josie Fraser. And um, Josie Fraser is, as we just mentioned, uh, as the host of OER17, one of the two chairs of the conference, which will take place in London in April 2017. So if you are watching this recording uh, in March, maybe, you can still decide to go to London because it's really, really an exciting conference. But it's not me to tell you that because Josie has prepared some slides and she will do it a lot of, uh, lot better than I could. So um, everyone who would like to use the chat for discussing items uh, during the slides is very welcome. If you would like to bring in a question for Josie, just write uh, like a capital letter question in front of it. And I can copy the question and bring it to Josie after the slides are finished. Mm, that's it. Everyone knows Josie Fraser, of course. For the few who don't, Josie is uh, one of the OER veterans and uh, did, for example, the OER Leicester project, which um, we, I think we featured it on uh, OER uh, Info, it was then um, used to be uh, OER Transferstelle, and it was like two years or three years ago. And now she's here again because she's talking about the conference, the politics of open. And I will be quiet for the next minutes and listening to Josie Fraser and uh, watching her slides. Josie, thank you so much for being here. The stage is up to you. Thank you, Joe, and thank you for that very, very gracious introduction and I'm really really happy to um, have been invited back so the last time couldn't have been so bad it's great to be here again and it's great to see everybody in the chat room as well um, okay so I'm here basically to talk about OER 17 which is a international European based conference that looks at open educational resources open educational practice and open educational um, movements and, prax and, and practitioners uh, in the whole. So it's a really well established conference now. I think we're in year nine. So next year will be our big anniversary year. And every year the conference has been going from strength to strength. This year we're going to be back in London um, in the UK and we're going to be at a venue called Resources for London, which you can see from the little map. I don't know if many of you know that much about London, but it's in the north um, and it's near the Holloway Road. So not, not bang on central, but a great place um, and a great venue for you to come and visit and still be able to access the rest of London from import importantly while you're actually over there joining us. So the conference is brought together by a whole bunch of people. I've got um, my picture and Alex's picture up there because we're the co-chairs, but actually huge, huge thanks and uh, huge work has gone into the conference um, from ALT, which is the Association for Learning Technology, which is a UK-based uh, non-profit that supports um, the use of technology in all kinds of um, uh, educational settings, informal and formal, and um, takes this conference forward every year. And I've got to say, their organisation skills have been impeccable. They've been an absolute pleasure to work with. Also supporting the conference is a huge international conference committee. Um, and these are the people that actually turn up to the meetings online, um, review the papers that have come in, um, and really help support and move the conference along. So uh, the job that Alec and I have had has been a very, very pleasant one, actually. We get to essentially shape the focus of the conference and, um, and act as ambassadors for the conference and drive it forward to um, achieve the kinds of things that we'd like to achieve. Um, I won't say anything else about myself uh, other than I'm also a trustee of Wikimedia UK. Um, I work a lot in open education, as well as um, across digital literacy and other kinds of education things. Alec Tukowski is um, based in Poland, and he is a internationally um, known 
activist, practitioner and researcher in relation to open education and particularly in relation to open educational policy. Um, he's also really, really good at karaoke, which has been, you know, one of the one of the reasons that I got him on board. Not the only reason, obviously, his international reputation, his professionalism, his outstanding work are all there. But, you know, it's it's nice to work with um, great people. So Alec and I kind of talked about what we would like for the vision for our for, for OER 17 and, and the kinds of things that we would really like to achieve and, and see the event um, contributing towards. And this, this was kind of our top list of things that we wanted. We wanted to further establish the conference internationally. And we've had a really good job um, and a lot of success already with that in terms of the international submissions that have come from right across Europe um, and beyond, and as well as the um, people that have already signed up to attend um, are coming from all over the world. We wanted this very much to contribute to the global conversation um, on open education, particularly this year, um, since it's the 10 year anniversary of the Cape Town Declaration and the um, important meeting that's going on in Cape Town um, this year around that and reflecting that. And there's also in September, there's a um, the Second World OER Congress is taking place in Slovenia following a huge international OER consultation, which um, people in the room may well have been involved in or taken part in or be about to take part in as well. So it's a great year. Um, for open education and for open educational resources and also for those kind of critical conversations around copyright, um, IP, ownership and, and really importantly to, for us to practice. Um, in, terms of, in terms of practice, um, both of us, but I think Alec particularly, was really keen to explore the format of the conference and to encourage contributions that were as creative as possible and to look at um, not just kind of uh, straight kind of academic routes to sharing knowledge and collecting knowledge but actually looking at a, a range of different ways of celebrating and sharing and gathering information and, and community too so we've we've hopefully in terms of some of the things that we've done got that over to the participants and we certainly been pleased with some of the um, submissions that have come in that have, have shown some brilliant creative approaches to the to the work that they're doing. Another really important thing that we wanted to do, um, this was decided last year, uh, so it's not a theme that ever goes away, but it has it is a theme that has perhaps become much more pertinent in light of recent global events. We really, really wanted to address inequality directly in terms of the event and the conference. For us, a definition of open practice is not just about being able to access materials, but it's actually also about the community and the activity that takes place, who gets to benefit from that activity and who gets to participate and who within these communities, especially within our community, the open education community, actually has a voice and a say and who's not getting heard so much. So we were very for, up, upfront about the fact that we wanted to um, critically address inequality and invite uh, people to look and think about that as well in terms of the uh, in terms of the submissions that we got. Working towards the mainstream of open education is something we've probably all really committed to and we all continue to do. You know, it's fantastic being a trustee of Wikimedia UK because um, it's a brilliant example of the mainstream success and placement of open education and open educational resources on a massive, massive scale. You know, there's an unprecedented scale that would not work before. Um, the internet and um, and the, and the kind of uh, way of the collaborative and um, production and curation and checking of knowledge wouldn't be into place. So it's a really um, it's been really positive for me in terms of knowing what's possible. There's a huge amount that is possible, and I think we're still with a lot of things relating to open education moving towards the, that mainstream. 
And the other thing that we wanted to do is we wanted to give back to the community with the event. People spend their time, their resources, um, contributing to coming to events like this. So we wanted to really recognise that and understand that this event is really important for the delegates that attend both in person and at distance in terms of being able to connect to people in their community and to make kind of relationships, um, uh, friendships and um, connections that will help them take their work forward, will help them get the word out about the work that they're doing and also may spark new kind of approaches and collaborations. So to frame those kind of aspirations, we came up with four themes that we asked people to submit around um, in terms of the uh, submission process. The first one was local, national and international policy and practice. So the quite quite the hard edged um, political end of it. So the conference is the politics of open. Um, we wanted to explicitly address within that all dimensions of, of the political and obviously po policy practice and, and law are important parts of that. So within this kind of section um, we were including things like privacy and surveillance and the and, and an open politics and you know asking people to reflect on and think about the kind of conflicts that there sometimes are between open practice and um, uh, privacy safeguarding as well as the kind of broader agenda that's going on at the moment in terms of um, governance and power and privacy. Second thing was institutional and organizational politics. So this was really kind of politics at a more local level. How does um, open education and open education resources and open educational pr practice uh, play out within kind of your locale, within your organization? How, how do we actually leverage cultures to change um, and to achieve that kind of mainstreaming of integration of understanding and use of open educational resources and practices? And, and how do organisations um, and communities come together, work, what works, what doesn't work, um, what are the kind of important things in, things in organising, making change happen? Third strand was participation and social equality. Um, so again, this um, links into our, our overarching theme about um, addressing inequality and looking at inclusivity as part of, as an integral part of open educational practice. And within that, there's a range of issues around human rights, around digital literacy, um, thinking particularly um, of the disadvantage that can occur for people who have not got the benefits of being able to be well supported in terms of their digital literacy practices. Um, and, and, the, and we know that there's a significant um, minority of people whose whose position is actually being exacerbated by the fact that they don't have those kind of digital literacy skills that are becoming necessary to contribute, to cope, to get by within mainstream society as well. The conference is typically um, HE kind of focus, so uh, we have a high participation from a lot of universities and that's to be welcomed. Um, they bring with them brilliant experience, fantastic research, but we also wanted to make sure that we were not forgetting actually uh, the spectrum of people and communities that are or could potentially be impacted by open education and benefit from it. Um, so we specifically highlighted the role of young people as well in the call. And then our third theme, uh, sorry, our fourth theme, um, surprisingly for Alec and I, is open party. And this theme really is the theme that we hope to kind of capture that spirit of creativity and fun and also um, support people whose, whose work and ideas don't necessarily fit into the other three categories to make sure that our conference is as inclusive as possible as well. Um, and we've got some great um, contributions around there. But the point of that stream was to kind of celebrate, to play, um, to look at innovation and, and to have those kind of wild card um, uh, sessions that 
not necessarily going to fit anywhere, but a lovely surprise to come across in the conference uh, like this. So the call closed a little while ago, and in fact, we've now um, contacted everybody and we've um, firmed up the programme. So you can head off to the OER17 website. You can easily find it. Just Google OER17 and you'll get there um, and check out the programme. Um, as it stands, because it's pretty much there now. This is a uh, word cloud from the um, from the contributions and papers that came in to the call, which is quite interesting. You'll see that Germany is on there, although slightly surprisingly, bears is a bit bigger than Germany. I'm <laughs> not really sure what that's about, but I, I guess we'll find out at conference. Um, there's, there's uh, a whole range of quite interesting uh, keywords that have, have come up there. We had, I think, six papers it was from Germany this year, which was fantastic. Um, but actually a huge international spread this year as well from around uh, 14 countries, I think, too. In terms of the submissions, they kind of pretty much um, fitted into the call. So 32%, the most popular strand, was this local, national and international policy and practice strand. And then at 11%, um, the open party strand was the least popular, but probably uh, one, of the, one of the sweetest strands that we have and one of the most fun strands that we have. And in terms of lead authors, I think it's interesting to mention this, that we have a great uh, gender split. So the work that we've been doing to support kind of addressing uh, gender balance along with um, other forms of inequality seems to be working well. We had 65% um, of lead named authors um, were female. So we've got good representation. So if you come to London, what will you get? You'll get three keynotes, you'll get 10 workshops and panels. There's 84 presentations, nine lightning talks and one plenary. So a huge, huge amount something for everything, everybody, and also um, the evening activities too, which I can't talk about yet because I don't think they've been formally announced. But there's going to be something very, very fun going on on a Wednesday night. Not, uh, It's not typical of what we normally do. It's something slightly different and, and will be quite pleasant, I think. I'll talk a little bit quickly about our keynotes um, so that you can have a look at the approach we've taken to thinking about how our community can be represented and also um, uh, the kinds of range and scope of activities that are going on in the community that we want to be able to let everybody access and hear about. So Diana Ars is a, a, a US born but Berlin based actually so she's uh, she's she's your your German uh, flag waver here in terms of the, the keynotes. Um, she's a artist and researcher, and she created um, Politioki, which some of you may have come across, which is a, a political kind of karaoke thing. You have to participate really to know what that means. Uh, if you ever get the opportunity to, um, please do. And she's the founder of Artists Without a Cause. So as well as an artist, we have um, our academic, Ma uh, Maha Bali, who is um, from Egypt and is the director, international director of the Digital Pedagogy Lab. She also works on hybrid ped pedagogy and she's the co-founder of virtuallyconnecting.org. Um, she's very, very well connected in terms of her uh, online communities, her networks, in terms of how she works. Um, uh, I've included Twitter handles in these slides and probably uh, Twitter is a great way to catch up with and track down all of our speakers and also participate in the discussion that we're having. So the hashtag OER17 is, um, is already quite a lively one. And Lucy Compton-Reed is the CEO of Wikimedia UK. Um, her strategy and focus has particularly been on decreasing the gender gap within Wikimedia projects. So she's a great speaker for us to have and a real compliment, I think, to the kind of lineup of a variety we have in keynote speakers too. 
Now, the other thing that we wanted to do at the conference was have a think about bringing everybody into a session. And the way that we've decided to do it is with our closing plenary. So we've got three fabulous um, women, Maureen O'Keefe, Catherine Cronin and Laura Cizerni. Cesarewick, sorry, and they are going to, they've, they've been tasked with quite a difficult job actually. So during the co conference for both participants and people participating at distance, there'll be opportunities to feed in to this final session that they're going to host. And what they're going to be looking at is building on um, the knowledge and um, work and kind of thoughts of everybody at the conference and pulling that together into a kind of coherent whole towards the end to take a really critical look at uh, where, where the movement is at the moment and where we're heading and, and what our priorities are and perhaps offer us some pointers as well. So please, please do get involved with OER17. There's a huge, huge range of ways that you can do it. Obviously, we would love to see you in London there, um, but we appreciate that that's a, quite a tough call for lots of people and not everybody um, will be able to make it. And we work very, very hard. Well, I say we, I've got to give the credit to the uh, Association for Learning Technology. They work extremely hard to make sure that people who can't um, be there can participate actively in the conference so there will be streaming for most of the talks videos will be released after the event um, the hashtag will be amazingly active and it will be a way of you asking questions commenting reflecting feeding in so please do um, join in on Twitter if you can't um, be there in person the other ways that you can get involved um, if you happen to run a business or you happen to be part of an organisation, have a think about sponsoring the event. The rates are extremely reasonable. You get a fantastic return for your investment. We already have two um, amazing confirmed um, sponsors. We've got Spark, who are a global coalition for open research and education. And we have the wonderful Reclaim Hosting as well, who provide... Um, uh, provide uh, domains and web hosting for educators and organisations um, who want to take control of their online identities. So there's opportunities there. Another opportunity is for you to think about co-chairing for 19, uh, sorry 19, I'm going back in time, oh no, no, things weren't better in the past, they weren't, they're better in the future. Um, oh we are 18. <laughs> 2018 we need um, replacements for Alec and I so you know and we're very very happy to talk to people might be something you want to consider Joran you'd actually be quite a quite a good person at, the, at this um, this year the co-chairs have been based in England that's me I'm in Leicester and in Poland um, Alec is in Warsaw so there's um, you know it would be fantastic i think to have somebody from germany especially with the amount of work and the exciting things that are ha happening here at the moment it would be a great way of you to um, contribute to and help shape the european and global oer agenda as well next year so please do consider thank you very much um i feel Thanks. like i've been doing a little bit of a sales pitch but um i hope that you will be able to join us because I think it is going to be a really important and fun event. Thank you very much, Josie. Um, some great imp impressions and I think it will be a successful sales pitch. And um, maybe to complete this, what about re re registration? How does it work? Is it still possible? Will it still be possible at the end of March? I think we keep registration um, open for as long as possible. I'm going to have to double check when the end date is for that, and I'm sorry, but it will be on the website already. And as I said, if you um, just Google OER17, you'll get to the website. There is a registration page there. 
and you can find out all of the information about um, accommodation um, uh, and, uh, and other, other deals. And obviously, if you've got specific queries or questions, get in touch, get in touch with us and, and we'll, um, we'll sort, sort any answers out. Uh, now that's the call for questions in our small but very nice chat room. Please bring in your questions or comments or whatever you would like to talk to uh, Josie about. Mm, my privilege would be to ask the first question. My impression is that the OER conferences are getting more and more international uh, in, in the last years. Is it like maybe this now is finally something like the European OER conference or maybe even more like, like a global OER conference? I think um, I think the conference has always been international to an extent, but I think um, we are definitely established now as a European conference, um, and that's one of the important reasons that um, Alec was co-chairing this year because I think it's really important that the co-chairs aren't just from um, the UK, but actually from um, from Europe as well. And in terms of the paper submissions and the sign-ups, yeah, it's an international event. We've got a huge amount of people coming from America, um, some from Africa, some from India, a, a, a large spread of people from all over the world. And you know, we want to we want to own that. We want to own that. It is a um, important, impactful conference. It's a brilliant opportunity for people who attend to network and join. Um, the community as well as for people who are attending at distance to benefit from the talks and the resources that are being shared and the information that's being shared too so yes i think definitely we're we're massively moving in that direction and i would be delighted to see um keynotes i'd, I'd delighted to see the co-chairs represent that again last year again next year and obviously our our keynotes represent that as well this year and our um, plenary members, so we have people from Dianus, as I said, is, is based in Berlin, um, uh, Mahas from uh, Cairo, um, Lucy's from London, <laughs> and and then um, our pan uh, panelists are from Ireland and from um, South Africa. And it's quite interesting, actually, that our plenary speakers are all three of them are outside of the Brexit Trump uh, category at the moment. So I think it is quite interesting what they will bring um, to the to the event and to the conference as well um, and, and what their reflections from their specific positions will be. Uh, there is uh, one question by Birgit. I, I'm not sure if I get the question, but maybe you do. What can we learn from the others? How can we bring not interested teachers to OER? Okay, so I think others is uh, a couple of things. When I hear the word others, obviously I, I did a lot of critical theory in the 90s, so I immediately think of others as in kind of othering and in, as in kind of discourses that um, disavow and keep people out of uh, organizations so for me it's um, it has those kind of connotations I think in this question though what he's asking is about people who are not um, not not that friendly or not that interested in in open education and what we do and in, in terms of that in fact in terms of both of those things I think the issue and one of the potential answers is around that mainstreaming to make our um, organizations and our associations and our activities much much more um, accessible because they are much more everyday kind of practices and I and that that's a huge thing to do I think it is possible though and I also think that the balance is tipping internationally in terms of open education I think uh, unfortunately the American administration may be experiencing some setbacks in terms of the, the massive gains that they made in recent years um, around open education, particularly within the school sector. 
But internationally, I think it's increasingly being recognised that open education and OER have a place to play in mainstream education at all levels, um, but particularly within the school sector. We have a support for the sales pitch by Martina Emke. She's uh, writing, the OER conference is a great opportunity for bringing together diverse national OER networks and communities. OER 17 provides wonderful opportunities for participating online as well if you can't attend personally. So I think we're nodding there. There's also a question from um, Tobias about the uh, about being a newcomer and the and the um, possibility of online participation. So OER 17 plays out very much online. Um, we do. We, the Association of Learning Technology and all of the conference committee and everybody involved work very, very hard to make sure that people that can't be there in person have as many opportunities to experience what's going on and to participate. So there will be streaming of um, keynote talks and other talks. Um, obviously, we can't stream every single thing, but a lot of the content gets recorded and shared afterwards as well. And there will be um, live streaming all the time through the event as well. In kind of tandem with that, there's obviously some back channels and there's also Twitter too. So um, the last few years, certainly Twitter has been a fantastic uh, place to be to discuss specific um, talks, workshops, um, all kinds of aspects of the conference people can get together. And sometimes, um, you know, I've been at the conference and sometimes you can't tell who's there and who's not there through the Twitter conversation and you know some people are making really powerful important contributions to the sessions or to the conference and they're not on site they're they're 100 miles away somewhere else and um, so the top tips really are check out the website because they'll be streaming through there and follow the OER17 hashtag as well because um, they will be telling you all that you, they'll be directing you to the live streams as it comes but also the conversation will flow around um, around that hashtag and further information will be pushed on. So if you haven't got a Twitter account, probably now is the time to consider it. Although, obviously, just to follow the hashtag, you can get around having an account, but obviously we want you to participate too. So it'd be, it'd be great if you do think about it. One impression that I got is that the, the OER conferences are also very open towards other open movements. And uh, I think this is maybe like the, the default for you in the UK, but it's probably not for, for, for the German community. Can you explain what it means to be not only OER focused, but with, with a broad open spectrum? Yeah, that's a great question. And it's something um, I've been very focused on um, for Wikimedia UK as well in the context of that. I think um, there is a huge amount of work going on across the open community and across the OER community. And um, there's, there's a lot of amazing organizations and amazing individuals doing different work, but sometimes they do get kind of siloed and they don't necessarily talk to each other and benefit each other as much as they could do. So it is really, really important to try and be as open as possible to um, people who may not see themselves as specifically focused on OER, but may, for example, see themselves focused on something um, that's very much related to OER, for example, digital literacy, um, building social, uh, working in publicly funded sectors, the whole range of things, I think, that actually connect at a quite a, a high level. Um, so there's a couple of things. There's the organisations that are actually part of the open community already and the importance of connecting those together so that we can actually work together, um, we can support each other and we can actually um, add power to each other's causes as well. And then I think there's also the kind of broader openness thing uh, that one of your questions has already brought up today about um, supporting people who are not either connected to the open community or don't necessarily see themselves, for example, as um, open activists, because a lot of open practitioners don't don't 
particularly regard what they do as a form of activism either and being open enough to be able to embrace people and to and to welcome those in and i think you know i don't think it's just i can't don't think oer 17 can take just credit for this because i've got to say of the conferences that i've attended over the last however many years you've already said that i'm old and i'm a veteran Joran, but the many many courses that i've attended you know open education conferences they tend to be a really nice bunch of people and they tend to be open and welcoming and warm as you would expect because something would be very wrong in the world if this was a group of people that weren't like that <laughs> but they tend to follow that up i'm going to take richard's question as well Yes, and um, just read it out aloud because people in the um, recording won't see the chat, so that's why we are repeating the question. Uh, the question is, thanks again for your inspiring talk. I have to read it because you can't read your own thank you messages. Um, so there's Richard Hine, fanboy, like I am. A question, why is it important for you to have the conference traveling from town to town, Cardiff, Edinburgh, London... Yeah, and who knows where it will be next year? Who knows? A large part of that is going to be down to the conference um, chairs um, and to the conference committee as well to kind of plan. It's really, really important um, not to stay in the same country. So we're UK based, but we have, as you, as you know, we've been to Wales, we've been to Scotland, and now we're back in England um, and in the capital in London this year. And it's, you know, there's very, very practical reasons for that. Um, it means that people who are in different geographical locations can find it easier to get to the conference and, and to the event as well. So, you know, it and it does massively impact um, on the on the on the on people who are able to attend so this year unsurprisingly we've got lots of people who live in london will be coming to the event previously you know we've had pe a lot of people from wales and we've had a lot of people from scotland we will have some of those again but obviously it's harder if you have to travel to um, venues so it's, it's for a very practical reason but it's also to um to embody the the kind of spirit of openness and of accessibility and you know to say that this isn't just a this isn't just an english conference in any way you know this is a european conference and we're really happy to be able to go to different countries and to you know fly the oer flag in those countries okay so uh richard Hanning is typing in thanks He's, uh, thank you for your questions not only Richard, but anyone. And if there are any more questions, OER17 is the hashtag, and there's a really active community that will answer questions. And I think it's really a community that's very open to newcomers. So if you haven't visited Cardiff and Edinburgh and all the years before that, um, you should come to London. So I would like to end with the slide that was not put there by us, but by Josie Fraser, Wir sehen uns dort. Uh, can I ask you uh, to read it out aloud for the end of this web talk? No, now, exactly now she lost the microphone. Okay, so I was explaining, uh, apologizing in advance for my very, very poor German. I, I am trying to make it, make an effort. Um, wir sehen uns dort. Excellent. Jersey, thank you again. Thanks for everyone uh, who is there, who contributed with questions. Uh, thank you for your participation in the chat. Now there's lots of more text. Applause. Great. Great into, into OER 17. Thank you so much. See you there. Thanks for taking the time. Just great. Thanks, anyone. Thank you very much. Uh, the team of OER Info behind the scenes. It was uh, great to have this web talk that was the first under the flag of OER Info, which was really international. Hope it will not be the last. And uh, of course, OER Info will also be in London and bring you some tweets and maybe some videos from OER 17. Thanks again, Josie. See you in London.